only the coordinates of B as well as A. So <coughs> A's are on the x-axis, so that's simply going to be 3, 0, and 0. B's on the y-axis, you get 0, negative 4, and 0. So <coughs> we go 0, minus 4, and a 0. That's the coordinates of B. Then we subtract 3 times I. You have negative 4 minus 0 J. Then you have 0 minus 0 K. Then this is going to be square root of negative 3 square, negative 4 square. And there's a 0, so that will be just the Z component. So the bottom here is square root of 25 or 5. That means UAA is going to be negative 3 I negative 4 J divided by 5. So that's negative 0.6 of I negative 0.8 of J. So that's what we get as the <coughs> unit vector along the axis, you know, find all the resultants. Then we need <coughs> two more points. We need a point on the force and we need a point on the axis. So for this problem, Let's say if I choose a uh, point, uh, let's say <coughs> if I choose this point here, this point here is starting, and let's say if I choose this point, or let's say <coughs> this one is three. Well, since the force is here, you could we have a choice. You could choose either this or this. So I could choose this point here and create an R vector. So I repeat that. <coughs> find the actual moment about a known axis, you need two points. So I chose A, so that's the known point, we know its coordinate. Then I chose C, because we know the coordinates for C. So we're going to have a vector R, and this is going to go from A to C. And that's the same thing the vector R we've been using. So now you have 0. 0, 4, that's for the C, then you subtract 3, you get 3i, you subtract so A, that's 0, so that's J, and then we have 4, and this also 0, so that's uh, K. So your actual vector RAC is negative 3i, 0 times J and 4 times K. And then if I write let's say M A A and that's because of the force F. And this is going to be U A A the X component of that U A A the y component of that, u a a, the z component of that. That's the force row the determinant. Then you have r a c the x component of that. Then you have r a c y component of that. Then you have r a c the z component of that. And finally, you have the third row, which is f x. Fy and Fc. And that's the equation I 
gave you in the beginning of the lecture. So this determinant, if I just make the substitutions, the first one is 0 0.6, negative 0.8, and a 0. Then the second one is negative 3, then there is a 0, and a 4. Then the third one will be negative 20, then you have a 40, and you have a negative 40. I mean, all we're doing is we're taking these components and we're putting that as the first row. Then we're taking this component, this component, and this component, replacing that as the second row. Then you're going back to the fourth, taking this, this, and this, and you're placing that as the third row. So that's what you should have as the, what do you call it, the component of the moment of the force F about AA. So we need to find the determinant here. We get negative 0.6, and <coughs> inside, we should have this times this, this times this, so that's negative 160. Then we have a negative, negative 0.8. We're looking at this, and then the product will be negative 3, negative 40, this times this, minus 4, <coughs> negative 20. So the first number here should be 16 times 6 is 96, positive. Then here we have 0 0.8, that becomes positive. Then you have 1, 20 coming from here. You have 80 coming from here. So you get 96. This both added together is going to be 200. So 200 times 0 0.8 is 160. So this should add up to this is 0, 256. And it came out positive, and the unit is going to be pound feet. So that's just one part of the problem. When I say just one part of the problem is all we got so far is the moment of the force about point AA. We still have one more moment. We have a moment going from a to E. I mean, it gives, I mean, the direction is defined for that moment, and it's going from A to E. So, <coughs> MC, that's the magnitude, and it's 100 pound feet. If I want to write the, that in vector form, let's say I'll, I write that as MC. 